Okay, so let me just get into it. I think everything should be good. Um, so the reason that I'm doing this live stream today is to talk about something related to my most recent country profile. The most recent country profile was uh, this one on Turkey. So in this video on Turkey, I talked about all aspects of the country. I talked about its history. I talked about its demographics and how it became the country that it is today and its geographic features and all of its various regions, its cuisine and a little bit um, like that, little, lots of different things like that. But there's one piece of information that I couldn't get into in the video because the video was actually made several months ago but it was waiting for release and I just released it last week. But within the last few weeks, there has been a change that affects this country, specifically its name. So in the comments under that video, lots of people wrote, it's not Turkey, it's Turkey. Or uh, the name has changed, it's not Turkey anymore, it has become Turkey, etc. So I was wondering, well, what are they talking about? I'd heard something about this, but didn't know that the change had come into effect. So here, is the change. The country Turkey, the government of Turkey has asked uh, its own people and also international organizations and people around the world to use the endonym Turkey when referring to their country. Uh, what do I mean by endonym? I mean that's the word that they use to refer to their country in the Turkish language. So they're asking people around the world to stop using the name Turkey and refer to it as Turkey. So let's look at a couple of articles that I've seen and learn a little bit more about this and I'll just give you my comments as we go along. This is from Al Jazeera, famous news organization based in Qatar. They, they have this headline here, UN agrees to change Turkey's official name to Turkey. Turkey began the move to change its internationally recognized official name in English to Turkey in December. So Keyword here is English, in English. Of course, the name of the country was already Turkey in Turkish, but people used the word Turkey uh, uh, when referring to the country in English. And of course, in other languages around the world, they have slightly different adaptations. Like in Japan, they say Turko, things like that. But the government is now asking everyone to use the name Turkey in all languages. They started by asking their own population to use to use the, the name Turkey, even in English. For example, they have um, broadcasters that broadcast in English sometimes. They want them to use the name Turkey. Some companies based in Turkey export their products. They want them to write made in Turkey, not made in Turkey, and things like that. Um, so they're asking everyone to change the name or use the, the Turkish, the native Turkish name Turkey. Okay, the United Nations has changed the Republic of Turkey's country name at the organization from Turkey to Turkey following a request from Ankara for the change. So the United Nations has changed the name that it will use to refer to the country. It will no longer say Turkey and other international organizations will do the same. Turkey began the move to change its internationally recognized official name in English to Turkey in December after Turkish President uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan re released a memorandum and asked the public to use Turkey to describe the country in every language. So I believe last December they initially began the, a public promotion to people in Turkey, to their own population, to change their use of the name. And now they're starting to uh, formalize that with international organizations and are asking the international community to do that. So basically, they're asking everyone to use the endonym Turkey. An endonym is a noun used for a place, group of people, or language that's used in that place or by those people in their own language. So we have Turkey for Turkey. Uh, for Japan, they say Nihon. For example, that's the endonym. The, that's, that's distinct from an exonym, which is a noun used for a place, group of people, or language that's used outside of that place or by people outside of that community. So Turkey is an exonym in English. Or in Japanese, they say Toriko, for example. So what is the benefit of this? Or why, why do they care whether people say Turkey or Turkey? What's the difference, right? Um, so if we look at this headline from the BBC, we can get 
a good idea. Turkey wants to be called Turkey in rebranding move. That word rebranding is interesting because it's used in marketing. If you have a brand, that means you have an image for your product or for your service, or in this case, a country. They want to create an image that uh, makes their country seem appealing to other countries or other people around the world. They want to have a brand or improve their brand, improve their image to promote themselves. So what's wrong with the old brand of Turkey? If we look at this highlighted part, we get an idea. State broadcaster TRT, that's like the government broadcaster that broadcasts television and radio in Turkey, uh, was quick to make the change as soon as it was announced last year, explaining that among the reasons for the image rebrand was the association with the bird traditionally associated with Christmas, New Year, or Thanksgiving. So there's that um, bird that we all, we all know, turkey, which is traditionally eaten at Christmas, etc. I guess the government of Turkey and people of Turkey are kind of tired of jokes about, the, about using uh, the name of the country Turkey that's the same as the name of the bird, right? People often joke about this. Um, it's a funny bird. It's known as an unintelligent bird. It's, it has strange mannerisms and sounds. It says gobble gobble. When I was a kid, we used to joke about, um, about country names that were similar to other words in English. We had this funny phrase we used to say. Um, it was, I was hungry for turkey, so I ran and slipped in some grease. We have hungry, turkey, Iran or Iran, and Greece. Greece being like um, fat or oil. So I guess uh, and, and adults make jokes like that too. They associate the name of countries with other words in English and try to be funny. So I guess people in Turkey, especially nationalists, don't really like that. Uh, people like Erdogan, who are nationalists, want to present their country as strong and um, they want it to be taken seriously and they want people to know like that it's an important civilization and not just this silly little country over there that we can make jokes about, right? There's another use of the word Turkey uh, that's highlighted here. There's two, actually. I know one of them. It also pointed out the Cambridge English Dictionary's definition of one of the meanings of the word as something that fails badly or a stupid or silly person. I don't know the first meaning, something that fails badly. I think that might be more of a British usage of the word. But I do know the second one, a stupid or silly person. Um, I don't really use it, but people in my parents' generation or older used to say things like, oh, that guy's a turkey. He's such a turkey, or shut up, you turkey, or stop being such a turkey. Basically, it, mean, it means like an idiot. It's an insult. So keeping that in mind, people in Turkey probably don't want that image or that, that meaning to be associated with the name of their country. Even though the, name, the meaning of that word, like that usage, as a stupid person or whatever, it's not related to the name of the country. It came from the bird. But in any case, people might still use it to make jokes and whatnot. So that's the basic reason for um, wanting to change the name. There's that negative association that they want to get away from. But also there are more positive associations that they want to uh, come closer to. So here are the words of Erdogan. Erdogan says, Turkey is the best representation and expression of the Turkish people's culture, civilization, and values. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said last December when his government released a memo about the name change. So I think that's when they released it domestically, asking domestic companies and so on to use the name Turkey in English. The rebranding may be related to Erdogan's apparent annoyance over the country's unflattering association with the bird. Right, that's what I just mentioned, um, the bird that we eat at Christmas, etc. Here's the key, I think. As the country's geopolitical role grows, Turkey has reportedly become more image conscious, and Erdogan's sensitivity about how the country is perceived also likely ties into his nationalist tendencies. Right, he wants to promote his country as strong and as influential and as important and as having a civilization that uh, should be respected, etc. So uh, presenting Turkey in that way um, helps to promote their country to others around the world, helps to uh, maybe build alliances, helps to get foreign investment, and so on. Okay, so there are some criticisms of the move. Some people don't really 
um, like the idea of this, including some people in Turkey, and I've seen them write their comments under the video that I released last week. Okay, let me just have a look at the chat for a second, making sure everything um, looks fine, making sure my uh, sound is okay and everything. All right, seems fine. All right, so here is the first criticism of the change. Number one, you can't expect the rest of the world to change their words or spelling. Uh, so, for example, the spelling of Turkiye actually has an umlaut above the U. We don't have that in English. So in order to type the word properly, I would have to download and install a separate keyboard on my phone. So expecting people to take that extra measure is maybe unfair. Um, and also expecting people to change their internalized vocabulary that they've been using for years or even decades is maybe asking too much. I've seen people say that, um, which you can understand because if you internalize a word, then you use it automatically. And to change that, you have to always be conscious of it and monitor yourself, which takes a lot of effort. Um, so if, if someone wants to change the name of their own country and make that change themselves, that's one thing, but asking everyone else to do it, maybe it's asking too much. That's a comment that I've seen written under my previous video. The second criticism is some say it's not a priority to rebrand the country's name. It's not a priority because Turkey has other things to worry about. There's a severe economic crisis and a currency devaluation, things like that, that are more important uh, priorities than rebranding the country's image abroad. But I believe there's an election coming up in the near future. So taking this move might be part of a, uh, it might be a, a step to make it seem like Turkey is promoting itself as a, a more important or influential or stronger country internationally. So it could be to win votes or to gain approval amongst Turkish people at home. Okay, another criticism is the name of the bird is Hinde. Uh, or actually, the stress should be on the end, Hinde in Turkish, uh, which is related to the word for India. Um, I believe the current word for India is Hindistan, uh, but in Ottoman Turkish, an older form of Turkish, Hindi was actually the word for India. So people are saying that it might be unfair to expect others to change their name for your country because of its association with the bird, when in Turkish, the name uh, of the bird is actually the name of a country, India. So it might be, um, some people said it's hypocritical or just, you know, maybe if Turkish people are offended by the association with the bird, Indian people probably are too. An interesting, uh, an interesting side note is that in the Hindi language, the name for the bird is actually um, Peru, which is Peru, which is the name of the country, Peru. So people from Peru might be offended too. So how far do you take it? How many people should be expected to change the words they use? And so on. That's an interesting point. So these are not necessarily my opinions. I'm just telling you things that I've seen people write in the comments. So Turkey is not the only country to have changed its name. Let me go back to this article here. Where are we? This one. Okay, so there are many countries that have changed their names. Usually what happens is it takes many years for, um, for everyday people to start using the new name. Now this one here, um, I think the official name was already the Netherlands, but the Dutch government overhauled its image by ditching the name Holland. As of 2020, business leaders, the tourism board, and the central government all refer to the country as the Netherlands. So I think the official name was already the Netherlands, but many government institutions and um, the tourism board, etc., used Holland as a synonym for the Netherlands, but they stopped doing that. Why did they stop doing that? Uh, it's another example of rebranding. The name change is reportedly part of a push to get away from the country's association with recreational drug use and legal prostitution, a potent pull factor for foreigners to the Dutch capital, Amsterdam, which lies in the province of North Holland. I don't really agree with their reasoning here. Uh, I don't think most people around the world know that Amsterdam is in the province of North Holland. And I don't really think that, uh, I don't think that um, distancing themselves from 
the province of North Holland will break the image that Amsterdam has with recreational drug use and so on. I think people associate that with Amsterdam, not with Holland. That's just my, my impression. So I don't think it's really going to change anything, but their intention here is rebranding. It's to change the image of the Netherlands or to change the image of uh, the image that visitors to Netherlands have of the country. Okay, another example of a name change is for a slightly different reason. This is North Macedonia. In 2019, the Republic of Macedonia, uh, though recognized at the time as the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, officially became the Republic of North Macedonia, basically from Macedonia to North Macedonia. And the reason for this was to improve relations with Greece, basically, because both North Macedonia and Greece claim to be the cultural descendants of ancient Macedonia, of Alexander the Great. Uh, Greece was not happy that Macedonia, North Macedonia, was using that name. So in order to make Greece happy, after many, many years and decades of conflict over this issue, they eventually changed their official name to North Macedonia. Now Greece is more happy about that and they can improve their relations. So the reason for this was slightly different. Um, it was to improve relationships with uh, neighboring countries and create more alliances. Iswatini, this one is also sort of about rebranding, but in a slightly different way. In April, 2018, uh, King Iswati III renamed Swaziland to Swatini, underscoring the ruler's bid to break free from the country's colonial past. It is said that the king was also unhappy with how Swaziland was confused by some with Switzerland. Okay, so rebranding to get away from their colonial past, that might be um, more for the purposes of creating a mental change in their own people by saying we're independent, we are not um, connected to our colonial past anymore, so we can be globally competitive on our own, that kind of thing. So maybe it's a sort of um, domestic rebranding in a sense. But also, um, by avoiding confusion with another country, they could be building awareness of their own country. So if you're reading something and you see Swaziland and you think it's Switzerland, you might not even be aware that the country Swaziland exists. But if you start to see a different name that stands out, you might look it up and find out what that country is and learn more about it. Um, so in marketing too, an important part of branding is to distinguish yourself from other brands from other products or services, what makes yours distinct, what makes yours special. So they're doing that here as well with this country name. Okay, another example is Czechia. This is also kind of a, a way of rebranding, changing their name from the Czech Republic to Czechia officially, um, because maybe they're encouraging more use of the name Czechia. They want people, they want it to be more widely known and more widely used um, in, in casual settings. So let's look at what they say here. Again, it's marketing that is behind the name change of the current, uh, the Central European country, Czech Republic. In 2016, the Czech government officially changed its name to Czechia, along with a recommendation to promote this short version in international contexts. Right, so something I noticed about this is that other countries often have like, um, the something, the Republic of noun, like the Republic of France. So we can easily shorten that ourselves to France. The Republic of France becomes France. But Czech Republic, Czech is an adjective. So how do we shorten that? You can't just say Czech because that's not a noun, that's an adjective. So we don't have an intuitive way to shorten that name um, so that we can use it more easily and commonly. So we always have to say the Czech Republic, the Czech Republic. So changing it to the endonym Czechia makes sense, in my opinion, because um, we don't have to make a decision about how to shorten the name. So I haven't really heard many people saying Czechia yet. They still say the Czech Republic, but this will probably take years or you know, take quite a while in order to become commonly used by regular people. At the official level, though, I think they are already using Czechia. Okay. Cabo Verde is another one that I talked about in a, in a video a few months ago. Cape Verde is the English name. Um, Cape Verde is a, a translation of the Portuguese Cabo Verde. Um, previously called Cape Verde, 
This is a partial anglicism, anglicization of the original Portuguese Cabo Verde, which means Green Cape. Although it's not a cape, the archipelago sits just beyond the westernmost point of Africa, the African continent. Okay, in this case, I think they were really trying to build awareness of their country because a lot of people have not heard of Cape Verde before. Um, and the name was different in various languages throughout the world, usually in a translated form. It was translated to many different languages. So if the country is not that well known and its name is different everywhere, it's hard to build awareness. So the culture minister at the time said the country sought a standardized name that did not need to be translated. So I think that's probably to build awareness of the country around the world. Okay, so those are some examples. Um, let me go to the next page here. Here's what I think will happen in the case of, of Turkey and Turkey, because this happens in many cases. International organizations will change the official name of the country to its endonym, Turkey, and governments will use it. So diplomats will use it, um, you know, ambassadors will use it, presidents will use it, international organizations like the UN will use it, and so on. But everyday use of the exonym Turkey will continue for years and probably decades. Uh, before doing this live stream, I was watching CNN, and in one of their headlines it said Turkey. It said the president of Turkey, Erdogan in one of the headlines. So that means that CNN is still using the name Turkey, even though it was officially changed. So that will keep on con continuing because a lot of people know the country by that name. And people who don't follow current events so much and don't know about the change still know the old name. Uh, so they'll continue to, continue to use it for a long time. It probably won't become um, completely changed until a new generation of people growing up, uh, a new generation of people grow up hearing it used in official contexts. So maybe my son will grow up hearing the word Turkey and will use it natively. But for people like me who learned Turkey as their native word, it takes a conscious effort to, to use the word Turkey or another endonym like that. Okay, so that's just a little bit of information and uh, some of my thoughts about this issue. It's uh, this discussion started because I, I released a video last week about Turkey. And here's the thumbnail for it right here. If you haven't seen this video, then I recommend you check this one out. Um, you'll probably learn something about Turkey, whether it's its history or its geography or um, its demography and its, its people and their, their culture, etc. I guarantee you'll learn something about it. Um, so feel free to check it out after you finish with this video. The video is on Turkey or Turkey as it's now officially called. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you again soon in the next video.